Okay, call hello, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, great males known to rule well. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace, mercy, and blessings to the sincere brothers and sisters doing this wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. I have a quick one, not relatively quick, I, 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 I suppose, I don't know. We'll see how the spirit, uh, how the spirit rolls, but this was something that I was thinking of this morning. And I instantly wrote down a title. I told myself, you know, to the best of my abilities, I would never make that same mistake again where I was thinking of a lesson and I'm like, and then put it off and say, okay, I'll write it down afterwards. Or after I'm doing this, blah, blah, blah. So I, I try to make a point to um, write these things down as soon as they come to mind. All right. So as you can see the top, it's called Burdens of Babylon. And and the reason being behind this is because of the, um, this place is, this, this is an inverted kingdom. Everything that is wicked stands out and everything that is righteous is shunned or, or you know, unpopular, deemed uncool or whatever you want to call it. But that's because the vibration of uh, the current ruler whom the earth was given into his hands, right? Because he had that little, little short season. Um, it's under the vibration of this ruler, of, of his current ruler, so righteousness will, you know, be snuffed out or try to be snuffed out, you know, that for this, the reason being is the, the, the remnant is here. So he can't fully snuff it out, although that he, that is what he wants with all of his wicked little heart. But, um, what brought about this was me thinking about the Sabbath and, um, I'll just get... I want to start with Mark uh, 2 and 27 because it says the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Uh, really, let me, let's get it in the KJ, not KJ, um, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> the NLT. Scroll on down. All right, Yahweh Shai said unto them, this is Mark 2 and 27, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people and not the people to meet the needs, to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. And if you pull that up in your blue letter and when you type in Lord, it is ruler, controller, um, like pretty much I, like have full authority over something is what the, what the definition goes into. And I, when I read that, I was thinking it's hard to, you know, in, in, in our time or in this time when they were still somewhat of a kingdom, um, the Sabbath was meant for a day of rest and, um, you know, it, it was pleasing unto them. But nowadays here in this kingdom, when Babylon and, or, or Rome 2.0 is in its sufficiency, so to speak, um, the Sabbath was is, is almost a burden because you think because and we we're not changed and we don't have we're not in um in our perfect flesh we're not in the second covenant so we you know we we go off we make make mistakes and the reason why it's a burden is because we don't want to go off we don't want to make those mistakes um it bother or it should bother you um and, and you know sometimes you 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 forget that it is or um. You may have something to do because that is the way of life here in Babylon the Great is go, 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 schedule, 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 money, this, money, that, things of that nature. And the Sabbath can almost be a burden. It shouldn't be, but that just shows the level of wickedness that goes on, the level of wickedness that is in the earth right now. That something that was meant for us to meet the needs of us can, all, can become a burden. And I only say that because we are in this full-fledged captivity and the Lord made it so because of our disobedience. So, and I, as I thought on that, I just, it was, it, I don't know, it was just unbelievable to me that something that was so beautiful and so perfect and meant to benefit you can be a hindrance in an evil kingdom. Which is why we need to be praying more and more, as much as you can, as hard as you can, for uh, Yahweh Bashem outside to pull us out of this, give us the strength to maintain and stay and stand tall and, and firm for the name during this persecution that is coming and, and, and to just get us the hell up out of here so that these things can be pleasing or these things that, the, you know, the earth can be put back in order. Right. And, and, and there's all of these things that I was thinking of and I'm like, we it's really time to go.
and I and I'm doing another part of, uh, on uh you know Avaratizat on that 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 uh, uh humanism and CC the sea change thing right the transhumanism or bioengineering I'm doing another part on that and it's that is why this he cannot be allowed to continue uh, so Sirach four and twenty eight straight to the point and it's going to tell you to strive for the truth and that is what we ought to be doing um. Because you, 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 it's a fight. It's supposed to be a fight. If this thing was easy, it wouldn't be a mystery, right? This, 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 uh, this truth, this knowledge, this way of life would not be a mystery. Everybody would understand it, and boom, we'd be in the kingdom <laughs> because everybody would repent. So this thing is a is a fight, and that is something that we cannot forget. So, um, dang it, what did I say? Four and twenty eight. Yes. But there was talking about wisdom in 20. Let me read 28. Straight to the point. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. All right. And if we love Yahweh Bashem Yashai, we will keep his commandments. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That is in John, the 14th chapter, um, maybe in the teens, early 20s, don't know. But you can go there. You can read that. If you love him, you'll keep his commandments. And the Sabbath is something that is well established. And it is one of the first things that you learn when you come into this truth. Well, I mean, it should be because it's so prevalent. It's, it happens every week, every every seven days it happens. And it is according to the moon cycle because a moon cycle is 29.5 days. Gregorian calendar, off. Julian calendar, off. Anything else that these heathen do, off. But the moon and the sun and the stars were for a sign and for times for us. And that moon cycle never changes. It is always 29.5 days. Just type in GMS Sabbath while you can. Um, oh, yes. And then I told myself to mention the dietary law. And that's another bird. So something that should be beneficial. Well, it definitely is beneficial. Hey, stop. It definitely is beneficial, but the burden that I'm talking about is that you can't even just pick up food and eat. You have to read every single label because everything has some damn pork in it or it's got some shellfish in it or something that we ain't supposed to be eating, something that is not food, but they go and destroy an ecosystem for profit and feed people things that are not meant to be eaten. And there's another thing about it being a, a, a burdensome thing. Now, there's nothing wrong with the law. What I'm saying, and I'm prefacing this, I will continue to reiterate just in case you're not understanding that there's nothing wrong with the law. The law is not a burden. The burden is trying to do it in this wicked kingdom, which is why we ought to be praying to be delivered out of it. Um, oh, we were still in the Let me go to Acts 14 and 16. I don't remember. don't remember why, but let's see. And really the point of this is just to remind brothers, man, keep striving, keep pushing, keep going. This thing is supposed to be a fight. It's supposed to be have, it's supposed to have some sort uh, or, or a level uh, of difficulty. Ah, that's why I did it. Okay, we'll start at 15. Uh, no, we're straight to the point. All right, so no, 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 we'll, we're 15. 15 is fine. And says, sirs, why do ye these things? So this is where Paul actually, <laughs> him and Bar Barnabas went into some of these cities. And he made the man with the crooked foot or crippled foot to walk. And they wanted to worship him according to these, these pagan ways. And Paul and Barnabas was like, no, nah, we, we're just men. Don't do this. Please don't. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's the preface of Acts 14. That's why I put that down. I remember now. All right. We also are, of, are men of like passions with you and preach unto you, but that ye should turn from these vanities, right, unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own way. And when he says all nations, because these are the so-called Gentiles that were, uh, that are actually Israelites, but they, um, they were, you know, following the, these heathen customs. That's why he went to preach unto them. 
to tell them to turn back. This is who you are because it, it, and he gathered some souls from, 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 from some of these cities. But he also got stoned and he came back. They thought he was dead. He came back, picked, kicked the dust and kept going and to, uh, uh, being about the father's business. So when he says in times past, suffered all nations to walk in their own ways, nevertheless, he left them uh, not, he left not himself without witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Okay. So the point was in 16 that, you know, at times past, us being in a Gentile state of mind, in a heathen fashion, you know, we walked in our own ways. But now that you heard the truth that this thing is going out through the unicorn that is the internet, um, and the apostles and prophets on the street corners teaching and preaching, this thing is going out. You know who you are, and that means you have a duty. You have a responsibility, and you are to turn from the ways of the heathen, right? Because we were going to be gathered from among the heathen. So that's all I had, and I just wanted to, again, just kind of remind brothers, this thing, and those of us who are new like me and, and, and a little newer, this thing is supposed to be a fight. Every level of difficulty will grow, and with that, your faith grows. And when your faith grows, right, you are pleasing unto you, Yahweh Shai, and also showing that you love him by keeping his commandments. So when that time comes where you are calling on a name to be delivered or you, because you're thirsty or you're hungry or whatever happens, and there's a situation where you need saving in the near future, the Lord's going to hear that because you were a faithful servant when things seemingly were good. So never forget that. All right. So stand ten toes for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Uh, I pray that you were edified with this short little excerpt that remember to keep up the good fight. All right. Babylon is a burden. That's why we need to be praying to get up out of here. Shalom.